If you're someone who presents with a rounder abdomen, commonly called a pot belly or a beer belly or anything like that, what if I told you that body fat was only one part of the equation? In fact, there are movement components that could contribute to the appearance of you carrying your abdominal contents in that particular manner. In this video, I'm gonna teach you the movement components that might contribute to the pot belly appearance and most importantly, what you can do to improve your range of motion in the abdominal area so your pot belly is less prominent. Why is it that some people carry their abdominal contents and belly fat lower than others? Meaning, why do some people have a pooch belly and others have more of a pot belly? To understand this, we basically have to look at what type of structure could take, if this was the abdominal contents, take the abdominal contents and push them directly forward without letting them sink down like you would normally see on a pooch belly presentation. The answer is someone with a wider frame, meaning they have a wide rib cage, a wide infrasternal angle, which would look something like this right here, or as we can see in this picture right here, this type of individual, as well as someone who has a wider shaped pelvis. Now, the reason why this structure predisposes someone to having their abdominal contents pushed in that pot belly shape has to do with the spine as well as the normal resting tension that should happen in the diaphragms. I'm talking thoracic, so your breathing diaphragm, as well as the pelvic floor. With someone who has a wider rib cage, generally what you're going to see with that individual, just based on their structural build, is the front side of the rib cage is gonna be wider and the back of the spine is gonna have a tendency to be a little bit more pushed forward. Now there's variations among individuals, but that's at least an overall tendency. When this happens, it changes the resting tension in the diaphragm, your big breathing muscle, on the front side and the back side of them. When the rib cage is wider, the front portion of the diaphragm has a tendency to sit a little lower or be a little shorter, more concentric. This happens because this position is associated with breathing in. When you breathe in, your diaphragm descends. On the back side, because the spine has a tendency to be pushed a little bit more forward, so you have increased backside muscle activity, the back portion of the diaphragm has a tendency to be more ascended or upright or eccentric. This happens when I exhale. And the reason why it's in more of an exhaled position is because normally when you breathe in, you're gonna see the spine move backwards. That helps accommodate air going into the lungs and the abdominal contents moving towards the backside of the body. And so what this does to the abdominal contents, the front side of the abdominal contents is gonna be pushing down and then the back's gonna be pushing up like this. So when I just push down with my index finger right here, you can see how the beads move a little bit forward. But because I'm lifting this uh, other side up, they also move back. So now we gotta look at, well, what else has to change to really think about pushing all those abdominal contents forward? Well, as you recall, I had stated that the back side of that person's spine has a tendency to be pushing a little bit more forward. So there's increased backside muscle activity with these individuals. If I squeeze the backside, you can see now that the contents are being more pushed forward. But now here's the issue. If I do these, you see how the abdominal contents also move down a little bit? That means I need some type of force below in the pelvis to push the abdominal contents up, which gives me that presentation of a pot belly. With individuals who have a wider rib cage, generally what will happen is the sacrum will be in a more nutated position. Sacral nutation involves the sacrum tipping forward and the anominus rotating backwards. Generally, the pelvis as a whole is going to be tilted more anterior. This is normal. When this happens, when I move the, the sacrum forward, you can see that the bottom portion, which is the coccyx, moves backwards. So the back of the pelvic floor has to be eccentric or on stretch. Conversely, the front of the pelvic floor is going to be more concentric or contracted. You can see what that looks like right here. And so as you can imagine, if I have the front of the pelvic floor pushing up, 
the abdominal contents aren't going to move downward like we see in the pooch belly. And so that's where we get a belly that's more pot shaped, meaning I got the backside squeezing everything forward. I got the top portion of the diaphragm on the front pushing down. And then my thumb is gonna be the pelvic floor pushing up. And you can see how in this scenario, the abdominal contents move straight forward as opposed to down like we would see with the pooch belly. And that's how biomechanically someone might present with more of a pot belly presentation. Now, that being said, of course, someone can have increased body fat in that specific region that could magnify that. Perhaps they have a tendency to carry a little bit more fat in their abdomen or they have visceral fat. It can also be magnified if there's any gut dysbiosis or gut issues, so think bloating, things of that nature, as well as any type of pathology that might contribute to the abdominal contents appearing much more forward. And if you present with that, chances are you should probably address those issues. And that can lead to vast improvements in the presentation of the pot belly. Now, how to do that goes beyond the scope of this video. But what I think we can't forget, folks, is there's also a movement piece that contributes to the abdominal contents being pushed more forward. And so what do we do? Well, we just basically reverse engineer the positioning that created the pooch belly. So movement wise, if I have resting tension in the backside of my body, pushing the abdominal contents forward, and it's magnified by the thoracic diaphragm in the front pushing down and the pelvic floor in the front pushing up, I basically need to reverse engineer that. So I need to choose activities that get the front thoracic diaphragm to ascend, the front pelvic floor to descend, and then I need to engage the abdominal muscles on the front to push the abdominal contents backwards. This is gonna allow the back musculature to relax, but at the same time too, folks, we need back portion of the pelvic floor to contract. This is called sacral counternutation, where the sacrum tips backwards. So that will push the abdominal contents upwards. And then if I can get the thoracic diaphragm in the back to contract, which happens when your back muscles relax, we can then push the abdominal contents all the way back. So basically, the movements that I'm gonna show you are gonna take someone who tends to do this right here by pushing the abdominal contents forward. We're basically gonna flip it so we can maximally push the abdominal contents back. The first move you're gonna start with is the Swiss ball rollout hold. This movement helps improve the range of motion in the lower rib cage, one of the first critical pieces that you need. Now, if you don't have a Swiss ball, you can also use something like a bench or a chair at home, or if you're feeling a little more advanced, you can also use an ab wheel. So here's how you're gonna do this move. You wanna get your forearms on the Swiss ball, you're gonna get your knees underneath your hips, and you wanna look up in between the finger tips, bars that rhyme. What I want you to start with is you're gonna exhale. When you do the exhale, you wanna make sure it's kind of more purse-lipped. So think like a duck face on Instagram that you do every morning. You want it to be slow and long, like this. You don't want it fast, like this. Slow and long. Eyes looking between the fingertips. You're gonna exhale and reach like that. Press your feet gently into the ground. You're gonna walk it out. You're gonna walk the ball out a little way so your hips are gonna come just a little bit forward. And then if you're really feeling antsy, and I would encourage you to do this without sagging, move the arms forward like that you should feel the abs working a significant amount. If you're not, press your feet down a little bit into the ground, you most certainly will. You're gonna hold this position and breathe. Now, you wanna be careful because this is also a very easy move to screw up. A lot of times people will just sag and go like this and then move really far. Well, guess what? If I'm sagged, that's pushing the abdominal contents forward. We don't want that. Conversely, you also don't wanna do this right here, which is crunch. Because if you crunch, what's gonna happen is you're ending up just moving a few pieces of the lower back to create the movement. And that's not gonna change the things that we need at the pelvis and the lower rib cage to improve the dynamics of your intestines. So what we want in this is, again, eyes looking in the middle of the fingertips. 
Slow exhale and reach. Walk it out. Arms forward, breathe. The next move you're gonna go with is the sideline same connect roll. What this move does is it biases the arm and the leg in a manner that creates a little bit more range of motion and relaxes some of the backside tissues so we can start moving the abdominal contents backwards. And moreover, we're also going to be engaging the abs which will help create that push. It's also really nice because it's single-sided. The rotational element is gonna allow you to get a little bit more range of motion than you otherwise would. Here's how you're gonna do this. You'll want some type of pillow and you'll want a yoga block and you're gonna lie on your side. You can do this on both sides, I would encourage you to do so. Bottom leg is gonna be straight. The yoga block is gonna go between the top knee, make sure it's on the knee, not on the thigh, the knee and the elbow, right here, like so. I'm gonna hold it here, and I don't want it to wobble, so I wanna get a little bit of pressure with my elbow and my knee. Now here's the cool thing. It's really difficult to crunch in this position because you have the physical blockade of the yoga block. Now with the free arm, in this case my right arm, I'm gonna reach across my body and grip my rib cage just like so. So I'm here, I'm here. Keeping my head on the, the pillow or the Airx pad and keeping my foot on the ground, I'm gonna inhale, roll to my back. Exhale, I'm gonna go back to the start. Keeping the pressure on the block. Inhale up, exhale down. If it's easy, you're gonna simply change the dimensions of the yoga block so your elbow and knee get closer together, like so. And then eventually, right there. Now if you go through those three things and you're like, Zach, come on, this is easy. How can we kick it up a notch Emeril Lagasse style? I'll show you. If you really wanna up the intensity, you're gonna start on your back and then roll to your side because this is a more difficult roll for this specific type of body archetype. And so with this, the setup's the same. You just gotta make sure you're creating the movement through the torso. I'm gonna inhale as I roll to my side. Exhale, bring it back. Making sure the block stays firm. Now, the thing on that particular roll that people will screw up is they'll just move their arm and their leg and the torso doesn't come along for the ride. You really want everything to move as a unit. So I'm kind of initiating this through my, my torso in my head to create the roll. Now the move that's gonna seal the deal for this is the squat because that particular move creates the stretched or eccentric positioning and all the areas needed to minimize the pot belly. But here's the problem. If you're someone who has a pot belly, you're not structurally built to squat all that well. Now you might be someone who can squat all the way down, but chances are you're probably creating a little bit of rounding through the lumbar spine somewhere to get there. We wanna try to make this happen with getting the pelvic changes and getting the torso changes needed to improve the dynamics of the ab wall. So what we're gonna start with is actually a box squat because this is a little bit easier and more in tune with your particular body structure. Now, in order to ensure that we're getting the backside to stretch, relax, and expand, as well as the pelvic changes, you wanna hold something in the front of your body. That's gonna minimize the tendency to arch the back, and it's gonna help promote those, those stretch changes we need in the upper back. I'm gonna use a med ball for this particular squat. If you don't have a, a big med ball like this, you can use a sandbag or you can hold a kettlebell really close to you. Zercher squats, where you're holding a barbell in the crux of your elbows, also works pretty slick. If you're someone who's just kind of getting into this, I'd probably start with the med ball. So you're going to just stand right in front of a box. You're gonna grip the med ball. You don't wanna grip like this. You wanna grip underneath like so, because that underneath grip is gonna help promote stretching in the backside of the body. So that way you can get some range of motion improvements that you need. So I'm gonna grip like so, get a nice exhale, hold the ball close to you. Because a lot of times people will let the ball drift away. That's not gonna get the mobility changes we want. Keep heavy on your heels, but make sure the feet stay flat. You're gonna inhale, sit down, unweight without rocking back. So I'm kinda of gonna stay in a little bit more of a hinge posture. Exhale, come up. Make sure you don't lock the knees. Look about 10 feet ahead as well. That should help also with the, the, the spine positioning. You might be thinking, 
Zach, that's easy. Surely you have something a bit more intense than that one. I do, but let me preface before we go over the next squat progression, because this is the show. Please make sure you've spent some time doing the earlier moves. Like you have gotten black belt with the Swiss ball rollout. You're nailing the same connect roll because the biggest issue most people have when they're working through this progression is they do, okay, I'm gonna do the rollout and then I'm gonna do the same connect and then I'm gonna squat and then I'm gonna do this, stop. This is a progression of movements and just because you did one doesn't mean you're ready for two. So if the rollout gets easy, then you wanna to move to the next one, then the next one and then eventually you're gonna get a ramp and do a full squat because that is the next piece. Now. The higher the incline on the ramp, so you'll see this side, I'm a little bit more um, on, a, on, a, on a grade than I am on this one, the easier it's gonna be. You still wanna do the same thing with the med ball. So you're gonna hold it here, get a big long exhale first, same way that we did on the uh, rollout. I'm gonna hold the ball close, like so. Now you don't wanna do any aggressive tucking, squeezing the glutes, nothing like that. Just think really subtle, back pockets down towards the heels, like that. Didn't even really see much happening, but all I was doing was I'm just thinking about very subtle movement of the pelvis. That's gonna help me squat as vertically as I can. Now that you're here, you're gonna simply take a silent inhale, looking about 10 feet ahead, you're gonna push these forward and squat straight down. Exhale, come back up without locking the knees. Make sure to keep the ball close, don't let it drift. And there you have it, folks. Those are the major movements and strategies that you need to improve the dynamics of your ab wall so you have less of a pot belly. If you found this video useful, why don't you go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button while you're here and comment below. Are there other things movement-wise that you've struggled with that you need assistance? Or if you're just like, man, those exercises were pretty cool. Do you got more? In fact, I do. In the link in the description below, you can also subscribe to my exercise channel, which has several different exercises that can help improve your range of motion, strength, and power. And in the description of those, it tells you exactly who should program or who should perform those specific moves. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in. You've been an incredible, outstanding audience, and I hope that you keep it real, but not to the extent things go wrong. Stay hungry, stay learning, stay moving. And I'll see you next time.